The first time we saw a plane, we thought it must have been the largest bird in the world. When the white men came, we believed that they were the spirits of our ancestors who had arisen from the dead. Fifty years later, the plane is now the easiest way to travel in Papua New Guinea. The country lies to the north of Australia. We're flying to Tari, to the land of the Huli, better known as the Wigmen. They live in the remote southern highland province. They've been here for 600 years, and most probably for a thousand years. The Huli are one of the largest ethnic groups in Papua New Guinea. How has life changed in the 50 years since their first contact with the white man? The Huli do not live in villages, but in scattered homesteads. Their gardens are delineated by trenches and high walls. Anna Alua, together with her female relatives, is mourning her husband, who died recently. They're members of the Seventh-day Adventist church. They lived and slept together in the same house, something unimaginable in the past. Since joining the church, they've had no choice but to sleep together. Changes followed quickly one after the other, but the husband is still the head of the family, and a widow's life is not easy. <laughs> Before the missionaries came, the bodies of the deceased were placed in wooden boxes on raised platforms. Six years later, the bones were removed and placed in a small open container. Among the Huli, unresolved disputes dating back years are sometimes settled in a bloody manner. It's a baby killing, you see. Four, 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 four years ago, you know, the clan from this people, they killed another one, and so they pay back. You know, so they, they killed this person today just in the market. You know. That's what we call a baby killing. Killing in the highlands. See, you see the man here, you know, that chop, then he fell down, then he cut in his ear, you know, in the skull. Backside here and also in backside, you know. See, look. And here. Now the clan, you know, these people will target, you know, you see the another one. So it will go on unless, you know, they have to, there, unless there will be, number will be equal or some compensation money. Some gifts, some, some money, as a compensation payment, and then, uh, then they will uh, bring back a piece to no more. And then they but forget about Forget them. about the... Yeah. But there should be the compensation yeah. to end this, <laughs> not with the police or the court. They cannot uh, fix this matter with the police and court, no. Tari is the most important town of the Huli. The first white settlements appeared here in the early 50s. 
Before the Second World War, Papua New Guinea was a German and British colony. It was only afterwards that it came under Australian colonial rule. It gained its independence on the 16th of September 1975. Independence heralded even more radical changes in the lives of the Huli. They were suddenly spirited from the Stone Age with its subsistence agriculture and traditional values to a market economy based on a cash payment for contract work. There are now 350,000 wage earners in Papua New Guinea out of a population of 4.2 million. This is the only jewel market that uh, is uh, serving uh, 40,000 for the uh, Hela region. I think Chile is uh, too expensive because it is cost, uh, so we have to take a uh, cargo from uh, late to uh, years, uh, credits too high. And uh, the earning on everything is uh, goods grown up and uh, in years too uh, expensive. All the goods are too expensive. Life in Tari was good up until the regional elections of 1997. However, now people live without electricity, telephone, a postal service and banking facilities, and all for different reasons. The main road is unsafe due to ethnic tensions. The banks and post offices were closed because of the continual danger of being held up and robbed by so-called rascals. The main cables of the electricity supply were cut during excavation works in 1998. A nearby gold mine has been closed down. Telecommunications have broken down through sabotage of the landowners because the government hasn't paid out the agreed compensation. A generator supplies power to the hospital. There must be more than six or seven children in a family that is a large family. They regard it as a large family. Normally in a polygamy family, you will see more than 20 children in a family, but that 20 children comes from different mothers. Luan Nasnas took part in a research project set up by the Department of Health. Some 50 health workers carried out this study among more than 2,000 people in villages and settlements. They discussed their problems and expressed their feelings and views on the changes in their lifestyles. The TGB Traditional Production Work Group consists of trained villagers who've become health educators in their village. They use song and theater to promote health awareness. I started this group to carry out the AIDS awareness to the community around here who doesn't know how the AIDS is affecting the lives of people. Uh, it, only the health uh, department cannot carry out the program. But to put this awareness group in between, it links with the community, and they can be between the community and the health staffs. Where the health staffs cannot get in, the awareness group can get in. In this region, we have 18 confirmed AIDS. <laughs> 